missionaries live in two worlds, two polar opposite worlds. Number one, they hate the oral Torah, they hate the Talmud, they curse it day and night, but they will gladly abuse it. And boy, the missionaries have a field day with it. Color live on the air. Go ahead with your question. Hi, yes, this is uh, David from Oak Park. Um, my question is, uh, why do Messianics reject the oral law? A lot of stuff they do uh, comes from the oral law. Like, I mean, wasn't Jesus a uh, Talmudic Jew, after all, and stuff like Hanukkah? Yeah, so it's interesting that missionaries will always tell you that they believe in biblical Judaism, and you, sir, from Oak Park— you're a rabbinic Judaism. You will hear this all the time. What's being conveyed is fairly transparent. You believe in a man-made religion, which bears some resemblance to the authentic Judaism, but you've missed the boat. We believe in biblical Judaism. So this is, it's, there's so much nonsense here that's really difficult for me to unpack it all. So to begin with, missionaries are, not good faith actors. They're just not. I'm sorry to say they're not. And you could illustrate this. You can demonstrate this whenever you respond to their claims of Isaiah 53 or Psalm 22. They right away go to the Talmud. Right away. Without, they don't, you know, most people, I think, I don't know, but most people who are going to rob a bank, who are going to rob a candy store, are going to steal something, for a moment, they pause and wonder, oh, no, no, it was a good idea. These people don't even flinch. It's like nothing bothers them. So what does the Talmud have to do with anything? If they believe that the Talmud has no authority at all, because all missionaries are, uh, are Protestants, so the Sola Scriptura, they don't even flinch. It doesn't even bother them. So then they believe in the Talmud and the oral law. Oh, they love it. They'll use anything they can to rescue them from leaving idolatry. They love their idols and so on. Moreover, it gets more unusual than this. I have an entire chapter in volume one of Let's Get Biblical. That, there are a couple of chapters that are really my favorite. And one of the things about writing is that, you know, sometimes you write and you just need time to stop and take a breath and clear your head and it takes a few days. And, but sometimes when I wrote these chapters, I would just sit down and just write all night. And it just flew right out of me. It flew right out of me. And the chapter on the oral law, which is in volume one of the school biblical, is one of those chapters which I really enjoyed writing. What is instructive about that chapter, what I go through and demonstrate, is that in the Christian Bible, the oral Torah, the Jewish oral Torah, is quoted all the time. And the Pharisees are held in the highest esteem, not in terms of their behavior, but in terms of their authority in the Christian Bible. In the Christian Bible, the Pharisee, being a Pharisee, was the gold standard. Jesus was from a Pharisaic background, we are told. Paul could not stop bragging that he was a Pharisee. And it is claimed for him in the book of Acts that he was a student of Gamaliel, which is nonsense. But who would have been the chief Pharisee? And the Pharisees, the Christian Bible, the Pharisees believe in the written oral Torah. The Tzedukim, the Sadducees, who are less prominent but still appear in the Christian Bible, are not considered of high esteem at all. You know, in the Sermon on the Mount, when we're told that Jesus says, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the Pharisees, you can't have to have it. He doesn't say the Pharisees and the Sadducees. So they all believed in the oral Torah. They all did. Matthew 23, verse 1, 2, and 3. This Pharisees sit in the seat of Moses, whatever they tell you, if you're not sure what that means. People have all kinds of spins on that. It actually says, whatever they tell you to do, you must follow. Now, Matthew 23 will continue with a scathing chapter of attacking the integrity of rabbis, of the Pharisees. For sure, it's unrelenting. It's, it's, a, it's a Q source. So it doesn't even 
bear in the Christian Bible. In fact, many of the arguments that Jesus, we're told, makes with his interlocutors, with his opponents, who are the villains, who are the Jews, <clears throat> Jesus is using exclusively oral Torah in order to defend his position. He's trying to out-rabbi the rabbis. Now, if you're a Christian, this is all brand new to you. You're not going to be taught this in Sunday school. You're not. It just it doesn't come up. Why does the church reject the oral Torah? I mean, it's in the Christian Bible. I mean, let's take an example. Ruth is the great grandmother of King David, right? The Torah explicitly in Deuteronomy 23 tells us that no Moabite can join the children of Israel. It's a, it's also is forbidden in the in the Torah. Okay. Now, if you don't have an oral Torah, that means that as nice a lady as Ruth was, her ability to convert to Judaism and be the great grandmother of King David and therefore the great grandmother of the Messiah himself is impossible. The oral Torah, however, tells us that when it says a Moabite, it only means men and not women. Why? Because the Torah says the reason why Moabites cannot enter the congregation of Israel is because that when the Jews were passing through the land, they didn't come out to greet us, to feed us, and so on. But women would have never come out to strange armies passing through. So women not only to men, okay? So all Christianity relies on the oral Torah for that alone. The nekudot, the vowels, this is the same thing as in Arabic. The vowel system, the written vowel system, is a fairly late invention. It's only 7th, 8th century that rabbis, Masoretes, created a written system, which is still in use to this day. What did they record? They recorded an oral Torah of how, what vowels belong under what letters. And if you change a vowel in any language, you not only change the way the word sounds, you change what the word means, right? It's just so simple. So how could you not believe in oral Torah if the entire vowel system, the only way you can read Tanakh is through knowing what the vowels are. Why are they called Mesorites, these rabbis? Because they are recording a Mesorah, that which has been passed down orally. You follow? So it, it's, it, it's a game. Now, why do they reject the oral Torah? I'll tell you why. They reject it for a, couple, a few reasons. I'll go through them very quickly. They came to finally reject the oral Torah because of a massive schism in the church that was unfolding rapidly between the 2nd to the 4th century, and that is on which day should Christians celebrate the festival of Easter. Although Christmas is a 4th century holiday, it's late, Easter goes back. They probably were celebrating uh, Easter in the 1st century. Christians were probably definitely 2nd century. That's for sure. But they didn't. So what do you celebrate Easter on? You celebrate it on Passover. Well, when is Passover? Well, it depends on what the Jews say. I can't go into the complications, but a, a Jewish calendar is not a calendar of 12 months a year. It can't be because it's a lunar calendar. But there are only 354 days in a lunar, in, in a lunar uh, year because there's there's 29 and a half days in a lunar month on average. 29.5 times 12 is 354. The problem is the Torah says in Deuteronomy 16 verse 1 that Pesach has to come out in the springtime. So the lunar cycle doesn't affect the, the uh, se seasons, only the solar one does. The point is that it's pure is based on oral Torah. So the Christians used to ask the Jews, when do you say the 15th day of the first month is? And then they would celebrate Easter. But they got into a big fight. Is it the 14th day, 15th day? Because the synoptics disagree with John. Is it the Sunday? Don't ask. It was a whole thing, and it was such a fight that it nearly brought down the whole church. The church was split. It was so much so that finally Constantine— had to settle the whole thing at the Council of Nicaea. And at Nicaea, the two issues that were addressed, one everyone knows, is the nature of the deity of Jesus. So, um, 
Alexander, the Bishop of Alexandria, he won, Athanasius won, and Arius lost and, and subsequently exiled. So that's the part everybody knows. But the other part was solving the issue of the calendar. And the Christians and constantly said, the hell with the Jews, let them all go to hell. We're not relying on Jews anymore. So the oral Torah had to be rejected because the Jewish calendar had to be rejected because the Jewish calendar is completely reliant on oral Torah. You have all these messianics, missionaries all over the place. And they have past messianic Passover seders all over the place. Hanukkah celebrations all over the place which is rabbinic, and it's in the Christian Bible. You know, Christmas is in the 330s. Uh, uh, Christmas, I think, 337. But it's, Hanukkah is in, in John chapter 10. It's, it's so crazy. It's so crazy. Moreover, Christians have an aversion to the Jewish oral law because the oral law is transmitted from teacher to student. And because it relies on the organic transmission of the oral Torah from master to disciple who are Jews who don't believe in Jesus, therefore it had to be rejected. And the final reason why it had to be rejected is because this is a little, uh, it's not complicated, it's a little subtle, which you need to, if you pay careful attention, we'll pick this up. What is the oral law? People think that maybe there are many commandments in the oral law, Maybe they know the 613 commandments. Maybe 400 of them in the written Torah and 213 in the oral law. The answer is no. The oral law basically is an explanation, a detailed explanation of how to observe the commandments found in the written Torah. Okay, Because the church will come to adopt Paul's antinomian attitude, meaning his aversion to ritual commandments— so therefore, the oral law represents the commandments, keeping the commandments, because the oral law tells you how to observe commandments, how to make a mezuzah. How do you do it? What do you do? How do you make tefillin? How do you make it, right? All right, Torah says you wear it, but what, where, how? That's all oral Torah. So therefore, the church would naturally have an aversion to oral Torah, and that's why missionaries live in two worlds— Two polar opposite worlds. Number one, they hate the oral Torah, they hate the Talmud, they curse it day and night, but they will gladly abuse it, misappropriate it, rip it out of context. And rabbinic literature in general is written in a highly, in a, in a, I'll just use the term scholarly fashion. I don't mean it that way, but it's just, it's just that it's written in a way that the the editors, those who compiled it, presuppose that you already was, are a master of the topic and therefore all kinds of thoughts are left out and therefore is highly vulnerable to misuse, to misapplication and misappropriation. And boy, the missionaries have a field day with that. They do. So that's the reason why the missionaries reject the oral Torah. If there's no oral Torah, how do you even know what the words mean? You can't, there's no vowels. Uh, just to explain this, like I could say, if they're, imagine the English language, right? So I could say, I have a big cat on my hand. I have a big cat on my hand, right? But if I take out the word, take the cat, the word cat, I put in a, a U instead of an A, right? Then it says, I, then it means I have a big cut on my hand, which makes sense. Was graphic, grammatically is fine, right? It just changed that one vowel, and bingo, means something completely different. It's really that. It's really that simple. We hope and pray that these missionaries will do tshuva, return back to the God of Israel. Many tens of thousands of Christians are repenting now in a way that hasn't been seen in history. And please, God, we'll see the coming of the true Mashiach, Bimheira Biyamenu, quickly in our time. Thank you for your question. If you enjoy this program. Please like and subscribe. Adon Olah, Asher Malach, B'terem Kol Yetzir Nivra, Let Nasa, B'chev Tzokor, Azai Melech, Azai Melech, Shemu Nikra, V'achare, Takov, Levador, 
אם לא כנורא והוא היה והוא עובר 